Chad, it's Maximus here. Let's talk about this Tecton Classic Gas Cap Style Palm Ratchet. These are actually were around. Have been, this style has been around for quite a long time, many years. This Tecton is only eight bucks, so they're not charging very much for it. I even got packaging that was copyright 2009. One thing I'll say about Tecton is on the back of their packaging, they say that you clearly need a receipt and everything for the warranty. But many people have commented that MIT Mission Industrial Tools, which was a cheap, a, you could say like a Harbor Freight type tool company where they were just an American company, but they just did uh, import and contract tools for very budget conscious. All of the United States, maybe for my international viewers, in the U.S. there are uh, lots of stores which are independent stores and they'll sell a variety of products. They're kind of like a one-off mom and pop department store. And this is where companies like Tekken, Michigan Industrial Tools, Westward, those names really kind of target those small mom and pop or independent auto shops with really budget conscious tools. Tekton has really tried to build their name up and so back to the warranty, a lot of people have been saying that they've been much easier going and if you can just show a photograph of an obviously uh, defective broken tool that they'll just mail you, mail you another one and they're not going to give you a big hassle such as Gray's Pneumatic. So I decided to give this 3 8 Palm Ratchet a shot uh, because it was only $8. And so it for $8, it is made in Taiwan, surprisingly enough. Um, it isn't the greatest of quality, but what do you expect for $8? Really, the exterior chrome plating, the finishes, actually doesn't look too bad. It's only a 24 tooth, and it just uses a basic swing pole ratchet design, you know, just regular Phillips head fasteners. The anvil's reasonably tight for what it is, but it's actually pretty stiff. They didn't put any lube in that. We'll take a quick look inside, and I'll hit it with some lube. So the idea with these over many other, either just using ratchet heads or these type of uh, finger ratchets here, is the fact that the finger ratchets you don't have quite as much of a grip on. They are smaller, uh, but you don't have quite as much of a grip, and it's not as easy to just keep your hand over the top of it. And so that's really the purpose of a gas cap style palm ratchet, is something that you actually have much more grip on, and you can put a lot of force. For instance, spark plugs are notorious if you replace anybody who's replaced spark plugs, or do, especially people who do them often, is you'll get the spark plug loose. And because it's a spark plug in the engine bay, the threads often have uh, build up on them. So it's kind of stiff coming all the way out. And so once you break it loose, you're either stuck ratching it all the way out or trying to use a socket like this with some knurling. This is a, an optimal situation for those kind of fasteners which are periodically catch or stick up. So you're either going slow with a ratchet, you can use this palm ratchet. And the idea is that it's more comfortable. You can put your hand on it if you need to use it one handed. It's pretty easy to do. The large wings can give you just a great grip so that you can just put it in there and then be able to ratchet something out nice and easily and with a pretty good degree of ergonomics. They also have another surprising advantage is things like valve, many times valve cover gaskets uh, have very low torque values and so you either need an inch pounds, a very you know, low value torque wrench. Um, but a palm ratchet like this is, works great in that type of situation because many people who are mechanics uh, definitely have a feel for the tension on bolts and valve covers. So these are the, exactly the type of ratchet where you can really get a lot of feedback on fasteners where you're just squishing a rubber gasket and you just need to feel a particular amount of tension on that. And even versus a torque wrench, I do agree that things like valve cover gaskets, there are many people or once you get experience with them, you find that actually hand tightening them and then close observation of the ceiling surface coming together, uh, you can get easily very optimal amounts of torque. And humans are actually much better at feeling low torque values and high torque values. People's torque wrench accuracy gets wildly inaccurate as soon as you start getting into 30, 50 uh, plus foot pounds where on low torque values, say inch pounds up to a few foot pounds, surprisingly enough, a person is pretty accurate. Let's take a quick look at inside. Here we are, there's a little trick to disassembling this. You kind of want to hold it all together and let the plate fall out. And then we can see it just has two swing poles. So these are one of the most rudimentary uh, designs. This body, it, it's chrome plated. I can't tell if it's cast aluminum or cast zinc. I suspect it's cast aluminum, but it could be steel. I should check. It is indeed non-magnetic, so it's going to be zinc or cast aluminum, and it's 
really hollow, hollow inside. And you just have these little ratchet swing paws. And all the little reversing lever does is just have this nub that just pushes one of these balls, these paws, excuse me, out of the way. Allowing it to ratchet. So you can see how coarse this thing is. It just didn't have any fluid in it. And uh, for some reason, they really sandblasted the tar <laughs> out of this anvil. That's part of the reason it doesn't run so smooth. Is it just has a, an unnecessarily coarse finish. It's like somebody put it in the sandblaster and then forgot it was in there. The anvil is, of course, steel. And so this is going to be a little cast zinc piece. And so if this ever gives you trouble with the little lever, all you do is you have to pull out this plate, set set it so that that cast piece is w relatively well supported, and just a couple really light taps with a hammer just to re-expand that uh, piece of zinc over the top. And ultimately, it's not that hard of a lever to actually uh, raid from another ratchet or even make yourself. So I kind of don't mind that design, but if it fails on you and that falls apart, apparently uh, Tecton will take care of you. So just a quick note on reassembling this or these styles here. This can be kind of a pain because there isn't enough space between those when you pull this out. What you have to do is you have to take the cover and you kind of get one edge of it on the edge of the paw and then you flip the switch at the same time and it'll end up dropping in. Finally got that all back together. Sometimes it's a little bit finicky. So imagine that you put just a little bit of uh, oil in there, a light oil and ratchets and uh, you'll be much happier. And I've learned about that. The reason you don't use grease and ratchets is because as the gr grease actually is uh, a thick paste that is whole that has oil mixed in with it. And then the oil eventually works its way out of the paste, providing continuous lubrication. That remaining paste, and if you ever open up, you know, really old tools or anything, you'll notice it gets hard. And so you don't want that in your ratchets. So you want something that's just a light oil in the ratchets. So everything is able to run freely. I really learned my lesson, especially on the newer high tooth counts. So... This thing for eight bucks really isn't so bad at all. You get exactly what you expect for being so Taiwanese made, you know, halfway decent quality. And apparently they're uh, really going to stand behind a warranty. So for a, just a cheap palm ratchet, I kind of like this. I've never had one of these gas cap style ones, but uh, I think they're actually, it's going to come real in handy. It's just a real nice balance of, you know, being able to get a nice, good grip and purchase, but still have just a, simple one hand easy to use ratchet that just doesn't have like a handle flipping around for uh those all those situations when you're running out sticky fasteners and of course when you're reassembling stuff just because it's nice and easy to be able to get uh, everything tightened down and just get a nice hand torque on it and then just go and do your final torque so anyway i really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing and Who's been leaving comments? I always enjoy reading the comments, even if I'm not the greatest about responding to uh, them. And if you haven't subscribed to the Caddis Maximus channel, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.